JBN, we keep you informed. Two guns and 67 rounds of ammunition stolen from sleeping cop. A member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, is now under investigation after he reported that a bag carrying his service pistol, his private licensed firearm and more than 60 rounds of ammunition were stolen from a room he was sleeping in. According to police reports last Friday, the cop, whose name and rank is being withheld, went to premises in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth, with a black knapsack containing a Glock pistol, which was issued by the JCF. His personal Beretta 9mm, four magazines with a total of 67 rounds of ammunition, a wallet containing his JCF identification card and cash. It is reported that the cop woke in the morning and found that the bag had been stolen. There is no indication yet of how the thief entered the room where the policeman was sleeping with a bag on a chair close to the bed. The Santa Cruz Criminal Investigation Branch is probing the matter. Athletes Kamar Bailey Cole and Ristinana Tracy tie the knot. Congratulations have been pouring in from track and field fans and colleagues for Olympians Kamar Bailey Cole and Ristinana Tracy. The couple who have been in a relationship since 2009 tied the knot on Saturday. They have taken to social media site Instagram to share images of the weekend nuptials with the hashtag Bailey Cole for the rest of our lives. The couple started striding side by side, attaching their names together before Mr. Nana took her stroll down the aisle. Last year, the athletes linked their names to form the Rista and Bailey Cole Foundation. To date, the foundation has offered charity to St. Monica's Home and the Homestead Place of Safety. They have also extended support to St. Theresa's Proprietary School, Papine High School and Edwin Hallin High School. Double fatal collision in Clarendon. Two motorcyclists died as a result of injuries they received in a vehicular crash on the Sunbury Main Road in Clarendon. They are 34-year-old Ryan Johnson, a pool cleaner, and 67-year-old Calvin Hales, a contractor, both of Sunbury District in the parish. The police report that about 12.30 p.m. on Saturday, March 15, an IREV E200 motorcycle was traveling towards the Victoria District when the driver lost control and collided with a Tiger E200 motorcycle that was traveling in the opposite direction. Both drivers sustained multiple injuries and were taken to the hospital where they were pronounced dead. KPH turns away bodies because of coronavirus concerns. The Kingston Public Hospital KPH has reportedly advised funeral homes that it will not accept bodies for post-mortems until further notice because of COVID-19 concerns. Chief Executive Officer, CEO of House of Tranquility, Joseph Cornwall, said last night that the order has landed his funeral home in a predicament because the body ought not be placed on ice until after a post-mortem is done. Tranquility is contracted by the government to collect the bodies of people who die at home or from illness or who have been victims of violence. How do we put a body in our cold room if the person is not pronounced dead officially? You could very well be putting somebody in a coma on the fridge because death has to be officially pronounced by a medical doctor, Cornwall said. What do we do now? Do we leave bodies? We don't even know if we can call them bodies. Cornwall's dilemma is emblematic of the displacement and chaos into which the industry have been thrown because of the outbreak of the novel coronavirus, which has caused 182,000 infections globally and around 7,000 deaths. Jamaica has 12 confirmed cases. The funeral operator said that he is disappointed at the abruptness of the decision and the dislocation it will cause. This shouldn't be willy-nilly. This is a professional thing. The only thing I could do is to keep the body off refrigeration. And that would mean it would develop tissue gas and get bloated, leading into the first stage of decomposition, Cornwall said. If it is not on the ice in the mortuary cooler at the optimum temperature, they were going to have issues because it's going to get bloated and have odor. He explained that he could add certain solutions to the bodies to prevent decomposition, but cautioned that that would constitute a crime. We can't introduce any solutions into the body because that could be interfering with evidence, he said. Attempts to contact the chief executive officer of KPH were unsuccessful as calls of the mobile phone went unanswered. Funeral parlors have been taking a financial beating since the emergence of COVID-19 in Jamaica. 
Corinne Byfield, CEO of Byfield Sons and Daughter Funeral Services in Kingston, said that he has seen a precipitous dip in business and employee attendance. He is even wondering if the uncertainty of the virus effects has driven gunmen underground. Everything slowed down, and on Monday we might pick up three to four bodies, and that didn't happen this Monday. We were discussing it and wondered if the coronavirus is making the gunmen then put on them guns, Byfield said. We have limited time to do a funeral, and that is if we are allowed. Sunday I was at church and some police told me I have 45 minutes in the church and 10 minutes in the cemetery. They said they don't want any large gatherings for too long, he lamented. He shared too that although there have been no deaths associated with coronavirus infection in Jamaica, he has enforced strict hygiene protocols in handling bodies. Truckers broke NWC Maine so they can sell water. The National Water Commission, NWC, says a lack of water in the Westmoreland Eastern area can be attributed to the acts of unscrupulous truckers. These truckers, in a bid to satisfy their narrow self-interest, have broken the NWC's main pipeline. They carried out this illegal act with a view to sell water to residents. The situation is further compounded by the actions of some residents who have tampered with the valves. This tampering has prevented some adjoining communities from receiving water scheduled, acting NWC President Garth Jackson said in a release. This follows Member of Parliament for Westmoreland Eastern Luther Buchanan's call for the company to immediately restore all potable water lines in the constituency in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. We implore these unscrupulous persons to desist from these practices as they not only damage the assets of the NWC, which divert our already limited resources, but they ultimately prevent legitimate customers from getting the precious commodity, Jackson continued. In the meantime, the NWC technicians will work as best as possible to correct the problem. We will also explore other avenues to provide water to the affected communities, even while we work to address the issues on the main pipeline, he added. Tour bus operators support travel restrictions. Tour bus drivers in Montego Bay St. James say although they are feeling the pinch of the coronavirus, they are in total agreement with the government's decision to place a travel ban on several countries. The operators say the virus has posed a serious threat to their daily livelihood, but they are adamant that they will not die from the dreaded disease. We know say it rough, but we're rather dead for hungry than for go play greedy and make coronavirus kill we said Steve Maxwell. We do our little thing like sanitizing ourselves and our environment to keep ourselves safe. But we are in total agreement with the health minister to ban cruise ships and persons from countries that are contaminated with the disease. Other tour operators at the Sangso International Airport said they have been having sluggish days since the first case of the virus was announced, but they are aware that the measures are for their own safety. I am following the protocol given to us by the airport, and that is to sanitize the bags, the seats, and doors to our vehicles, and even ourselves on every single occasion we transport our guests, said Clinton Jackson, another tour operator. We have now reached a point where we are barely getting any tourists, sometimes not at all, but our safety comes first and we have to choose life over being infected. The operators say they are even more careful now that the health ministry has announced that some of the confirmed cases were detected in western Jamaica. Banks forego asset tax cut to provide $3 billion for Jamaica's COVID-19 response. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark has announced that banks have agreed to forego the reduction in asset tax for a year. This will allow the government to add $3.02 billion to the $7 billion already announced as a contingency to deal with COVID-19. Clark, in opening the budget debate last week, had announced that the reduction in the asset tax would have taken place on April 1. It was part of an $18 billion tax cut announced by the minister. In the meantime, the finance minister also announced that special consumption tax, SCT, will be waived on 100,000 litres of alcohol, which will be donated to the National Health Fund. He said too that customs charges on liquid soaps, sanitizers, masks and gloves have been waived for 90 days. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.